So, gonna be a super special record Wednesday today because this is something I just figured out the other day and I couldn't find any YouTube videos or the like with this exact bypass method on it. Uh, so, I'm really excited to, uh, let's see, here we go. This is the uh, lock bricking cracker. And I'm here to brick a lock for you. This particular wag lock was something that I found outside, and it promises to be secure. Is that a good impression? Am I nailing it? <laughs> He's gonna beat me up. <clears throat> He's a lawyer. He's gonna send me a C and D for using his likeness. That's how good I am. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to, like, leave all my other wreck -It Wednesday videos up to be like, no, look, I do this for all my videos. It's not just, I'm not stealing your gimmick. <laughs> oh. I like how they'll let you uh, type butt and holes, but not butt holes. That's really cool. Great. So, um, I'm going to try and keep it a little shorter today because it's school night. Get this. Yeah, that's what I want. She's calling you everything but the ass. She's only calling you the worst parts of it. <clears throat> so, gonna keep it short. It's a school night. Um, this is gonna be fun, though. Hey, what's up, Strafe? Good to see you. Cool. Wow, we got a lot of viewers right out of the gate. That's neat. Great, haven't seen you around in a very long while. Good to have you back. Gonna get this set up. Buttholes are a ring. So what I got here is the WAG key, back, key box. Uh, if you don't... Wow, hang on. gonna turn that one off right now I'm not gonna I, I love when people have usernames I can't pronounce I'm not uh, I'm not gonna pronounce that uh, I have so many bots running in here too hang on we're gonna turn that night, night bot off and then I'll give you the intro and then we're gonna dig in I already know this is gonna be cool because I secretly did. but uh, don't tell anyone edit out all of this banter for the YouTube version. But uh, you'll be the first people to see me doing this top to bottom. Uh, where did I put Nightbot? There it is. Oh no. I like all of these things. There. No. All right, everybody post all of your favorite excess symbols, starting with Nick. Oh, it's Boxy. Oh, holy crap. Boxy existence confirmed. Boxy is not dead. That's cool to know. Anyway, uh, thanks for the follow, Boxy. Please enjoy our uh, copyright-free Christmas jams. Oh yeah, I gotta play the bird law intro because I'm the lock picking bird lawyer, right? Let me see if I have that loaded up. It's in here somewhere. I think it's here. I don't know, every time I ran it, it was super choppy. Oh no, I totally got rid of it. Yeah, okay. Well, go on my YouTube channel and go watch my bird law commercial. I don't have it handy real quick. I'll post a link. Hang on. Also, if you go to bird.law, you can get a free bird.law email address, which is particularly interesting because you have to be a lawyer to get a .law TLD, your .law domain. So enjoy that one. So you can all watch that when I get set up here. 
I don't have all my weird videos locked and loaded anymore. Uh, they were so problematic I stopped using them and then I just lost them in a, in a recent cleanup. <clears throat> All right, back to what we were doing. Um, this is the WAG, the current WAG key box. WAG is a dog walking service that uses these realtor style key boxes uh, for you to put your house keys in. That's what that is, uh, so that people can get into your house while you're not there. Um, a lot of people think that that sounds like a perfectly fine idea. Oh, it requires a Jacku subscription specifically? Oh, I think you're right, you are right, oh well. Uh, so a lot of people think that it's a good idea to just um, not only allow strangers into your home, um, whom you've often never met because you got them through this, you found them through this WAG app, um, but also to leave, literally leave your keys dangling outside your house um, in this very bright green and silver and shiny box. That, like everyone knows definitely has your house keys in it. Um, so let's see what kind of good shots I can get. This is a good one. So, while there are a lot of um, destructive ways of getting the keys out of this box, uh, the downside for that, and the up, well, for a thief, the upside for you as the user is that um, if the box is gone, you know someone stole your keys. If uh, the box has been broken open and your keys are not there, you can uh, pretty quickly determine someone stole your keys. Hey, what's up, Bearcat Girl? You're here early. Good to see you. Uh, so what I really like is what's called surreptitious bypassing. And that's where you can get into a lock or bypass a lock or bypass some kind of physical security um, without leaving um, any kind of measurable trace. Um, and that can, you know, the, the definitions of that can get really extreme, like measurable down to like scanning electron microscope, looking for scraping. Sure, depending on exactly where you're breaking into, that might be the response you're up against. Here, we're definitely not. All we want to do here is be able to get into this box, take the keys out, close the box back up, all in such a way that um, the box, A, doesn't look all mangled on the inside or out anyway, uh, and B, still works. Uh, so that um, A, uh, it's a long time before the owner of the house keys inside this box realizes that they've been stolen, um, or B, the absolute worst case scenario is that the thief gets in, takes the keys, makes copies of them, then puts your keys back. And then you will absolutely never ever know that somebody else has a copy of your house keys uh, until uh, perhaps all of the things in your house uh, are missing. Um, Personally, if I were a thief who did this sort of thing, what I would do would just be to swap everyone's dogs. I think that would be fun. I'd go in, take your dog, leave a different dog, and then everyone gets new dogs. Maybe someone will start a local neighborhood group for all the dogs to get their dogs back, and then they'll all be friends, and that's great. So that's what we're doing. We're trying to facilitate a dog swap here. Uh, but in reality, these things, these things fucking piss me off. I hate key boxes. I hate key boxes so much because, like I said... They encourage you to dangle your house keys outside your house um, and and broadcast the fact that they're there. Uh, and they're nearly all of them are the absolute worst, uh, including those used by realtors, which uh, may be not such a big deal because often if you're uh, if you have a key box and you're selling your house, you're probably not living there anyway, and so there's nothing there you care about. But this, I mean, I think most people care about their dogs more than they care about most anything else. Um, so yeah. Um, we're going to steal some dogs today. So this, uh, this apparently, uh, used to belong to Paul H. Um, and had a code of 362. So Paul, I, I hope you're okay. Because this lock is about to not be. <clears throat> so, uh, just, this is just a little weatherproof cover here. Uh, and we're going to try 362 and guess what? It's not going to work. Uh, just to show you that I have messed this up and have no idea what the code is. Although this doesn't really show that. You have to take my word on it. We're doing a quick stream. So yeah, that code don't work. Hey, what's up, mod killer? So yeah, funk lock, beat up back. Uh, can't get it open. Now, uh, wheel locks, wheel combination locks like this. See if I can get a better zoom 
down in on here. Here we go. Um, have a often have one common vulnerability amongst all of them, uh, which is generally known as decoding, uh, which allows you to um, not guess the pass per password or the you know code, but actually determine what it is on the first try. Uh, I should have got this out before. There it is. So I'm going to go into my my bypass kit, which I guess we can go into some other time, uh, just in the interest of saving time here. But uh, what I'm going to use out of here is just this little decoder feeler. It's uh, from Peterson, um, one of the absolute best bypass tool manufacturers out there. Uh, they are freaking great. Peterson-international.com if you want to check them out. Um, yes, you can buy cheap decoder tools somewhere else. Um, yes, you can make your own. Um, I really love everything about Peterson makes. They put a lot of thought into what they're doing with a lot of these tools. You're going to pay a little extra for them. Um, it's often worth it. Uh, right down to, like, you can see just from the angles of this, I beat the crap out of this decoder tool. It's all bent and wacky, um, but it still does the job it needs to do. Where I found with other decoder tools, especially homemade ones, like, you're going to get one, sometimes one use out of them, and then they're all beat up. Um, oh, also, just I'm putting these away. Um, this is my padlock uh, shim, a combination lock shim. It's titanium, uh, and it's not titanium because titanium is cool and expensive. It's titanium because I can use it a thousand times because uh, it's still it's thin but still strong. So uh, it's a good time. I think I got that from the same place. I bought like a five pack of them. Even this holder is from Peterson. <laughs> so um, we've got a decoder tool here. And why is it called a decoder tool? It's just a big piece of aluminum sticking out of a plastic handle here. Uh, it's great for stuffing into stuff. Just my camera here so I can see what you see. That'd be pretty cool, huh? All right. Yeah, ooh, let's get down in there. buddy you can do it okay so I'm gonna just do this real quick well as quick as, as it happens to be uh, and you're gonna go you're gonna have to take my word for this first part of it what I am gonna do after we figure out what the code is is I'm gonna tear down this lock because it is racket lenses uh, and I'm gonna show you what this is doing on the inside of the lock in real time so you can really understand um, how this attack works and how shitty this lock, this key box is and how shitty most of them are and why you should absolutely never use these for any reason. Uh, in the meantime, yep, we're still doing doggo fundraiser. We've got a lot of expensive doggo problems going on here. We're over halfway there, so that's awesome. Uh, so, uh, all monetary happiness that comes in through this feed goes towards removing tons of dog teeth. Sometimes those teeth were in the dog when it was born, or, you know, those dog grew those teeth themselves. One of the dogs got other dog teeth inside of it. That was its own problem. Hey, thanks for the follow. Why? What is with the names today, kids? Nick, how do we pronounce that one? Uh, Mod Killer? Uh, this, yeah, this is obviously going to be a rebrand. I'm pretty sure WAG is not manufacturing their own key boxes. They don't even make a good app. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what I'm doing with this tool is sliding it in on the left side of this wheel here. And I'm not jamming it all the way down in there. I'm getting just the tip, and uh, it's, it's, you can almost see. Uh, I'm resting it right on the, what I guess is a camshaft inside of there. Well, actually, it's. It is a cam. It's a little wheel with a notch in it. And I'm trying to find where that notch is on the wheel as I turn it. It's only in one place. Uh, and uh, underneath these three wheels are three little uh, 
kind of pointy things that fit in those notches, and I don't remember what those pointy things are called. But once you get all three wheels notches lined up facing downwards, those pointy things pop up and it lifts the latch that's inside and the door will pop open and I'll show you all that once we figure this out as well. So what I'm trying to do first is locate where those notches are in each of these wheels so that I can then get all the notches aligned into the right direction. Oh, they got a four wheel lock now. All right, I'm going to buy one. Maybe we'll, we'll decode the four wheel one next week. Uh, why do they have two different ones? Like, how many numbers can you remember? I'm the lock picking bird lawyer, and we can only remember three numbers because we're birds. So I'm going to be feeling right here on the edge of the wheel. You can see how this is just barely going in there. I'm just resting it on the edge of that cam and I'm rotating this wheel, trying to feel the notch. There's one right there. Uh, I'll roll it back so you can see my tool move. Real, like I'm resting it on the top. Let me if I do this from the side. Wow, this is hard to do on camera. This is very unnatural. We got the tool barely in there, and I roll it once. Okay. I missed it because the way that was tripped. Oh, I had it too far forward. Okay. Because now I know what the number is, but I didn't announce it yet. I'm trying to show you. There it is. You, know, you can tell when my tool kind of went from there to like popped up because it it sank into the divot that's right there. So that's what'll happen. The tool will sink into this divot. So we've got a five on there. Oh, this is funny. I think we're already on it. Yeah. I'll, I'll roll it back and forth a few times, but like, there's a, there's definitely a divot right there. Like, see that pop? I say run it over it. <laughs> so what are we on, zero? Okay, let me try going up a couple, and then I'll roll it back down and see. Yep, feels noticeably different. It's really easy to feel. Um, I'm dragging this out so that I can explain it to you. If you were doing this out on the street, it, these divots are so huge that like you would just look like you're fumbling to get the password right for a minute maybe, and then you'd get it. Uh, sorry, I keep calling it a password. I'm a computer dude. Um, yes. There it is right there. Okay, so five, zero. Nothing there. We didn't get lucky that time. Oh, wrong side. Nope. Oops. Anyway, let's uh, get in there. And I'm just going to roll. And you want kind of a light touch on this side. Not too heavy. Um, and you want the right angle, because if it's facing real perpendicular to the wheel, the divot will roll right underneath it. You want it at an angle so that when the divot rolls in, uh, it's gonna, the tool is gonna slide into that pit. And that could be a little tricky if you don't know what the interior of the lock looks like, but not, not extremely tricky in most cases. And often what you can also do is turn it one number, feel around. Something right there. There it is. Right there. All right, cool. Right there. So we found three divots, and we've got this code 509. The door doesn't open. Why is that? If you were paying attention before, you know why that is. Is it because Johnny doesn't know what he's doing? Sometimes. But not this time. Uh, the issue is that, like I said, 
we felt for all the divots, which are now right here. They're about, they're facing up. They need to be facing down. And I'll show you why once we get inside. Um, so how do we get them all facing down? Given that we think they're all facing straight up or about straight up, we're going to try rolling these numbers uh, four or five times forward because the divots are on these little cam wheels that rotate. And so we're going to take it from this direction and spin it so it's that dagger direction and the divots on the bottom. Uh, and so given that it's about a full semicircle and these are engine wheels, we're guessing it's going to be about five, sometimes four, sometimes six, depends on exactly where things end up. Um, but real easy to guess. So five, we're going to go, we're going to roll that all the way down. Let's try nine. I'm going to, you know what? Let's try fours first. And if fours don't work, we'll try fives. So then zero, of course, that's going to go up to four. you get in the middle there sometimes there's these little pressure fingers inside we'll show you that like wear out and the, wheel, the wheels don't exactly stick in the middle anymore so you got to make sure you get it right in that right place especially if it's a higher security wheel lock you got to get these things exact or it's not going to work but this this serves as not uh and then and we're gonna go we're doing fours right so nine i'll put us at zero one two three is it four? Is four going to do it? No. Four is not going to do it. Should have made you guys bet. It's not doing it. So um, I bet it's five. So we're going to roll each one forward once. Just a zero. Five. Four. Boom. And that did it. <laughs> Look at this dumb crap. This is what you put your house keys in. Are you kidding me? Look at that. These aren't my house keys, so don't. I'd be like, ooh, I'm gonna. You can't, I'm not gonna broadcast my house keys on stream. Uh, would it be easier or quicker to just brute force plus one on each number instead of guessing plus four, plus five, plus six? Um. No, because then you're doing way more guesses. Because then you're doing, you're guessing plus one, plus two, plus three. Certainly you can. Uh, I don't know how much time you're saving either way. Maybe seconds. Like, yeah, you can certainly do that. Um, when you're decoding locks in general like this, um, really that's what you'd want to do. It just happened that I already knew, and I really, I'll, I'll take this all apart and really show you. I already knew where the fingers were in there. So I knew that the, the notches had to be upside down. Yeah, if you're decoding any other wheel lock, you do want to do one at a time. Roll everything forward once and, and try it. Roll everything forward twice and try it. Keep doing that because you don't know where the fingers are. You just know where the notches are. I really love that you guys all watch the Lock Picking Lawyer. I realize he has millions of subscribers, but I still feel like he's one of those like side channels. It's really obscure. And nobody really gives that much of a crap about what he does. I think it's amazing. I mean, who doesn't like breaking into stuff? Or at least watching other people. Uh, Bosnia and Bill, another great one. Absolutely. Deviant and Dalem, a good friend. Perhaps he's watching. If so, hi. Glad to have you. Um, so, one other thing you'll notice is all we did here is open this door. Uh, this shackle still doesn't open. <clears throat> and that, I believe it's this lever. I think you just move this lever, yeah, and then the shackle pops out, and that's all that opens. So you still can't open the shackle until you pop the door. Uh, but, important side note, if I mess this combo up, the door is open. And still pop the shackle so that shackle is not secured by any kind of combination whatsoever um, if you were to devise some kind of tool that could snake in through the side and push that lever without knowing the combination that would at least allow you to surreptitiously remove the lock and abscond with it and then screw with it at home uh, and then take a yeah, that's fine 
take a grinder to it or something. I don't know. Doesn't seem like uh, a great uh, solution. Um, another option you could do here, uh, perhaps, and we'd have to see, uh, like Mod Killer is saying, um, if you, so again, we're trying to do surreptitious. We're trying to do all of this without damaging the lock or letting anyone know that we were inside of here in any way. Um, you could chip the weather stripping off. That might not be too noticeable. Uh, and then you can slip. Oh, that's why. So, you... Mm, no. Yeah, you still wouldn't be able to slip a shin down there uh, because of the way this isn't fully closed. Once this is in, see that this is actually what pushes that back and forth. There you go. You can see it really well there. When this is fully closed, that metal flat piece is all the way through to here. So, you couldn't slip a shim in to push it because there's no bevel on this side to start pushing it that way. Um, also, yeah, that's that's what you need to do there. So that would not work. You couldn't shim this one. So. Good thinking there, at least. <laughs> yeah, if it wasn't covert, sure. You just take bolt cutters. You can bolt cut your way through nearly all locks. Hell, tons of locks. You can crack the shackle on with a pair of wrenches and enough force, with you know, but like hand force. Um, yeah, we're trying to do surreptitious. Again, the idea here is, can we get inside here, take the house keys out, go make copies of them, put them back and close it up and have it still be fully functional uh, and have nobody know that we ever did that and then come back six months later and hit the place. Not that you should do that. I don't know how much have to say that on Twitch to not get banned, but we'll see. Yes, teaching kids how to rob houses on Twitch. Teaching them how not to. So if you ever accidentally do this, um, don't. And so then you know you've done it wrong and then you shouldn't be doing this. So that's our disclaimer. If you ever do this, don't. Uh, so yeah, anyway, um, snaking something in here would be extremely hard. I thought about this too. Uh, what was our what was our passcode? Was it zero five and five four? I think. Yep, that's it. So, oh, let me show you how the locking mechanism on this works. So you've got this little divot here. Yeah, it's got a little flat back here, uh, and up here we've got. I'm going to use this as a pointer. We've got this little flat piece here, and it's all the way up right now. It's got little springs inside that are trying to push it down, uh, or trying to push it up, sorry. Uh, and when the divots are all aligned and the fingers are in the right place, it can get pushed up. If we change the combo, I'm just rolling the wheels here, you saw it pop right back down there. So you see how it's flat on that side? What happens is that crams itself down into this divot, and then you can't you can't pull that forward um, because then you would think well why can't you just like slip something in here and pop that thing up uh, because uh, you'll see in a second but those cam wheels aren't divoted in the rest of the places and so they're pushing this thing down there's nowhere for it to go can't get pushed up so slipping something this way is not going to work um, back to the shackle idea uh, slipping something in through the side also isn't going to work because you've got these two huge posts right here blocking that. Um, you would have to get something that would go like maybe this way, but because you've got this lip here too, you have to go up and over and then get it back down. Like that's, that's not how physics works. That'd be really hard. And then again, all you're doing is removing the lock box at which point you, you know, there's probably easier ways. <clears throat> Oh yeah, all those COVID Christmas ornaments we were printing are uh, done. Uh, 
these guys show these off right quick little intermission here it's her uh, little pandemic commemorative Christmas ornaments <laughs> Also, I was doing a doggo fundraiser weekend where I was 3D printing tons of these. Uh, if you want a three pack, um, I've got them up at that link over in chat. You can go grab some there. These uh, people have been exciting to send all over the place. I've been getting a lot of orders. So yeah, if you want some on your tree, give them a look-see. And we're back from our commercial break. Doggos are okay. All the doggos are okay currently. They, uh, just getting them to a state where they're okay uh, was the problem. <laughs> it was an expensive situation. Thank you for the concern. Well, it was Fitz. If you guys remember Fitz, he's never really okay. He's just an unending string of what is it this time. Uh, Fitz needed 17 teeth removed. The teeth are about $100 each. That's not great. Uh, he had a some horrible oral infection. We pulled a bunch of teeth out. Uh, we're hoping that clears up some other problems he was having. We will see. Right now he's kind of how he's always been. But... Etsy link doesn't work. Let's see. Works for me. Anyone else? Working good on my end. Yeah. <clears throat> Bearcat girl, maybe you gotta shake it. Or like, uh, hit it with something. Access denied. Are you on a VPN? Maybe. Man, I hate when I hate places do this, but. A lot of the free VPNs, and even some of the paid ones, I'm seeing certain stores block block those IP ranges, which is the dumbest way to do it. Yeah, try turning the VPN off. Man, that sucks. I really, I'm upset that Etsy would do crap like that. Let me know if that works. Um, yeah, so anyway, back to here. Why does this work? Uh, well, I told you why it works. Shut up. Um, but you probably want some evidence of what I'm talking about, or some of you are visual learners, like me. But we're going to take this whole damn thing apart, and it's going to be really fun. Uh, first thing I want to do is, you'll notice when we go to remove this shackle, I, I can't, it stops there. And it's because of this little uh, D-ring that's here, so we're going to pop that off really quick. Those are generally pretty easy. Um, I always cut my fingers when I do these, so get ready! Get ready for another Johnny Bloodstream. It's been a while. Cool. Glad to hear it, Perfect Girl. It's getting real close to Christmas to ship things. The USPS has been wrecked. Ghost Express ghosts are taking like 10 days. It sucks. So I hope things get to places in time. But there's not a lot we can do. Um, I don't have a proper pair of pliers over here. So we're going to fake it with these angle cutters. I'm just going to pop this to ring off. Just needs enough. Oh, actually, I can probably pull it. Let's see. Yeah, just pops right off there, so that's easy. There's my magic bowl. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a thirsty day. All right, so then we slide this lever back this way, and shackle comes right out. That's it. That's all. That's all that's going on. That's all we got here. That easy. And um, there's nothing really to it. These slots that are on either side of the shackle, uh, I don't know if you put that together yet, but it's what those two things slot into. I'm gonna move in this lever back and forth, so that's what unlocks it, allows it to pop out. Otherwise, those slip into these slots and then you can't, can't go anywhere. It's a bunch of metal grinding together. Like how most of the people just stuck around for the decoding and then ducked out. <laughs> like, cool, got it. Gonna rub some houses. Bye. Um, all right, let's get down to the cool stuff. I'm gonna pull up these two screws here. I'm gonna 
first did this, I was like, like cool, screws are out. Now what? Uh, doesn't come apart. And then I said, okay, oh, cool. There's probably four screws back here on the back side, right? So I, I uh, flipped it over and I started peeling up this way. And I was like, no, there's no screws back here. What the hell? What am I supposed to do? And I like went back and forth and back and forth. And I'm like, what's going on? And then I realized like, all, right, well, all the guts are up here. Let me check up here. And then sure enough, two other screws back up this way. So uh, again, we've already done our surreptitious entry. We're done. We've broken in uh, by using the combination. So there's no evidence that anything, anyone who wasn't supposed to be into this box uh, has gotten in. We've used the combination. We've taken the keys out. We closed it back up. We ran to the nearby hardware store and had copies made. We came back and using the combination really quickly, put the keys back in, closed it, scrambled it, left it. Nobody knows anything happened. Dog worker comes by, opens the box with the combination they have. The keys are there. The homeowner opens it to get the keys out for whatever reason. The keys are there. Nobody knows anything bad happened. Now I have a copy of your house keys. And you don't know. So that's done. What we're doing now is seeing how this lock works. So all of this, like, oh, peel the crap off the back, this is this, this is not necessary. We're doing this because it's wreck it Wednesdays and it's fun. So I found this other panel back here. Again, Phillips screws. Plink, plink. Get this back in, this back panel off. There's our guts. Just like those guts. You know them guts, kids. Kids want to see a dead body. Let's see if I can. Maybe this one's better. Oh, that sucks, though. Nope. <laughs> I can't move my hands around when it's like that. And my focus is locked, and I don't know how. Ooh. I don't, okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to interpret messages. My ping is telling me. Okay, let's see if this does something. Oh, it does work. Cool. All right. Hooray! Cat rolls her own crypto. Okay, oh, it's gonna light back on before. You. All right, this is gonna send springs everywhere. So, oh, geez, it already did. Oh <laughs> uh, no. Okay, well, let's see if I can find it on the floor real quick, or I'm gonna get my magnet out. Yep, it's down there somewhere. I knew that was gonna be. A Oh, uh, well, uh, it's fine. We don't need it uh, now. So normally there's a spring right inside this little uh, shaft here. And that's what keeps the tension on this. Uh, and this thing is, of course, those things. So as we were sliding that lever back and forth, this one here, that's this whole metal piece. And there's a spring here that causes that tension. But as soon as I popped it back off, that thing went flying, and it's the tiniest spring. Um, but I'm never going to use this lock, and it's garbage after this, so I don't care where it went. Just uh, remember there was a spring there. And if you ever take apart one of your own, remember there's a spring there. It's going to go right in your eyes and follow. Uh, so, we've got twizzers, and uh, this thing just comes right out. We'll get to the fun bits here real quick. So next up uh, is this bit. This uh, provides two functions, one of which, right here. And I'm not really sure if this is its purpose or not. But it does at least uh, provide place for the shackle to go. Uh, it just does provide a stopper on this thing that the shackle fits on. Uh, um, there's a, uh, oh yeah, another spring that came up. Uh, there's normally, a, this spring is in here. 
and it uh, provides a little pop so that when you push the other lever, it'll pop the shackle up too. So that's what causes the shackle to pop, literally a spring that just gets locked in there. Uh, but, yeah. So anyway, uh, the shackle goes in there, as you can see. But also, it's got those those pressure pressure fingers on there that I was telling you about. Let me pull this out. I'll just show you those real quick. So these are not the the locking fingers. These are literally just leaf springs made out of copper that uh, turn it sideways see they have those, those little yeah see they're kind of pointy little triangle edges on them those push into the little notches on the uh, dials the number wheels those are not the notches that cause it to lock and unlock those are literally there just to make sure that uh, as you roll the wheels uh, that they lock from number to number. They just provide pressure so it goes click, click, click. Uh, and that uh, ensures that when the divot, which I'll show you in a bit, is in the right place, it's always in the right place because you can't get halfway between eight and seven or something. I mean, you can if you go real slow and force it, but like generally, if you're flipping the numbers through, it's a usability issue. It just makes it work a lot better. Hey, what's up, DJ Cliche Darkness? Thanks for joining. Yeah, it's Fresh Bags here too. Good to see both of you. Uh, so, here, here's the meat and the potatoes of how this lock operates. This is the fun bit. So I'm going to get focus here. I think I can. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. So, remember how, I'm going to try to do this while knocking everything out of place. So gonna, oh, I locked it. I can't show you the front. So, hang on. Let's just dial back in. Yeah. This is oh. sucks without it. This pressure feels in this. Woof, it's coming out. Okay. <laughs> Everybody hold your breath. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, so you can see this is also a great sign of how crappy this lock is. You can see these numbers are not lined up perfectly, right? They're a little bit off. This one's a little further down than those two, uh, and it still opens because uh, there's a lot of play. There's a lot of leeway here. Um, that's what, you know, you go, well, who cares if the numbers aren't dead center? That's more like a, an aesthetic issue. No, because that implies that the divots that you're feeling for with this thing are really huge because there's that much wiggle room in between the numbers. That makes the divots really easy to find, makes this lock really fast to crack. So, um, this piece here that I'm pushing up and down, who remembers what that is? I told you it's on springs and it wants to go up. It's that thing. It's that thing that goes into this thing, as we discussed earlier. So, um, it wants to be unlocked. The natural state of this lock is it wants to be unlocked. It doesn't want to be trapped in this little pit. Um, you can see, if I keep pressure here and roll these numbers boom pushes it back down goes into the little divot and now the door doesn't open so what's causing that what's causing that to get pushed down well these little fingers here here and here little metal things in between the wheels that I'm touching. Those are what are being stopped from being able to move upwards because the lighting is the lighting's really good. Because this, see the silver wheel in between the two number wheels that I'm rubbing the tweezers on? It's in the way. It can't go up anymore. There's this wheel in the way. Keep spinning. I think this will be the easiest wheel for you to see it. I keep spinning this wheel. Eventually, we're going to see. Boom. There's the divot I was talking about, right? 
checking my screen here to make sure that it looks like quite a few. Yeah, yeah, right there, right inside there. I'll move it back and forth so you can definitely see, hey, there is a divot. And I'm sorry, I'm using the wrong terms. I did learn all the right terms eventually, and then I immediately forgot them because I went back to using the terms I had been using for years. But yeah, that little divot, then as you can see, eventually lines up with this little metal finger down here, which uh, doesn't move up because it's all attached to the same metal plate. And the other wheels are not in the right place. So their divots aren't in the right place and they're still blocking the wheels. So if I can hold this one in the right place and turn all these, see, do you guys see that other divot? Yep, you can totally see that. See that divot moving up, now it's down. Oh, get out of there, come on. <laughs> it's actually trying to open because the other one's in the right place. Yeah, see, right there, that divot, as soon as I move it, watch, I gotta leave, leave some pressure here, but as soon as I move it down, clink. This thing moved up, the metal latch moved out of the way, right? Door opens. That's how that works. Does that make sense? Thanks for the follow, Happy Dagger. Glad to have you. And so that's all that's going on there. <clears throat> so um, you can see slipping something in and trying to push that latch up wouldn't work because this is all metal. And if the wheels are not in the right place, it's, it's not going anywhere. Um, it does have an amount of play. And uh, it's funny because maybe if you slipped a thin enough, uh, you would, you'd, it, it would be destructive. But uh, anyway, yeah. That's how that works. Um, there is just for, oh man, hang on, let me get this back open. Here, I'm gonna open it from the back end now without using the code, just literally by staring at all of those divots. Boom, okay. So <laughs> it's that easy now. Um, hold this in. So it's got, there's this little lever is here too, right? What the hell is that thing? It's a little dangly bit. Um, this might cause everything to pop out. So again, hold your breaths. But uh, if you push this in, it, you can see it moves all of those cams with the divots out of the way. It's, it's popping out. Hold that in. Normally that's held in by the piece I removed. Uh, it pushes all those cams out of the way. See that? It pushes them like out of the center of the wheels just a little bit. Um, you know, let's go and let's take those apart. I'll show you exactly how it's, it's working. Uh, passwords for days. Can you try to use the tool while showing the backside for where, how you want to? Oh, great idea. Yep, sure can. I actually meant to do that and I forgot and thanks for pointing it out. So let me reset this. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So it's going to be a little hard because there's nothing holding that in and it wants to pop out. So I'm going to be pushing it in with my thumb here. So you'll see divots right there, right? So how we were decoding this, which is the whole point of this video, is slip the tool in uh, and so if you're if you're just a little higher if you're doing a lock other than this um, sometimes the divots are on the left sometimes it's on the right there's no rule of thumb there uh, you might have to try both if you're doing an unknown lock and this one we know it's on the right because we just looked so I'm gonna put this tool in so that's all that's there and I'll show you the back end see the tool coming out so that's what I meant by like don't don't put it in too far you're gonna get way past the divot Take a look at where the tool is, where my thumb, right in the center of my thumb. You see that divot? That's what we're feeling for. So I've got this tool just like right, right in the top here, right? Sorry, let me put it on the screen. This tool right on the top here. So we're, as we're moving the number wheel up, the divot pops up. Eventually, we put a little bit of pressure on the tool, the divot pops up, and the tool dips, dips into that divot. See how I can move the tool 
real well now that it dips in there. It's not in the divot. I can't move it to it a little because it's bumped. It's, it's hit the edge of that wheel. Sorry, I'm trying to watch on my camera here. That's why it's like off the side of the screen. Here, let me do this and I'll do it one more time. For those of you playing our home game, go this way. There we go, much better. So again, pushing the tool th right through here, right? right. So there it is inside there. And from the front, so if, you're, if your tool's in that far, you're way too far. You're never gonna catch it because you want the point of the tool to get into the divot. So you need the tip of your tool to just be touching. Oh man, this, here we go, sorry. If you're in this far, not gonna work because you want the tip of your tool to be able to get into the divot. So just have the tip of your tool touching that wheel. And let me pull it back because it's easier. Uh, and then start from here. So you got your tool right, see that? Right on the edge. I know it's it's hard to see, the lighting's not great. That's why I keep pulling it this way. But uh, see that divot coming up? I've got just slight pressure on this tool. Divot's coming up. Wow, this is hard to turn. Oh, now it's popping out. Normally this doesn't happen because there's a lot of stuff holding everything in place, but I removed it all. Oh, yeah. Hang on, I gotta reset all this. I broke it. Center wheel is what broke. There we go. Okay. We're fine now. One more time from the top. <laughs> Slip the tool on the side. Might be on the left side, might be on the right side, varies by lock. You want to rest your tool right on the top of that cam wheel. You don't want to get too far in because you won't hit the divot. You want the tip of your tool to fall into that divot. And then as you're rotating, you're putting just that slightly upward pressure. See that divot there? Eventually, boom. See how the tip of my tool falls right into it? Now I can move that tool a lot too right into it. And you can see if my tool was too far in, I'd miss it. That's too far. But just the right amount, just the top falls right in. You know, I can even use the tool to move the wheel. And that's how you know you're in there. Like that. So that's like a, a good way to be for sure. Like if you can push your tool up and the wheel turns, that means you were in the divot. That's where it was. So yeah, does that make sense? I think it makes sense. It better make sense because I'm not doing it again. So that aside, uh, what I was... Oh, man, let me unlock this again. Come on, little guys. And really, on these kinds of locks, um, you don't need to feel out every number, just two of them. And then the third one, you can. Oh, I think that's what you were talking about before. Passwords for days, brute forcing it one, one by one by one, maybe. If you weren't, yes, you can also do that. Once you get all but one of the wheels, of course, then you can just go through all 10 of the options of the third wheel. Probably be quicker up until it pops. So um, back to what I was talking about, this little lever on the side here. Uh, this is your password reset right uh, and it, you can see, as I was showing you before, it pops those cams out of the center of the wheels, just slightly, just like two millimeters. That allows these wheels to spin freely, like that, see? And so what you do is you hold, you, you hold that in while you set any kind of new passcode that you want. And then when you center the numbers, uh, you release it and it locks those cams normally when this is built properly and I didn't break it off. Uh, it pops those cams back into the wheels uh, and that's your new passcode. And I'll show you how those work because they actually work similar to how manual transmission works. Uh, yeah, passwords for days. That's what I, yeah, 
one so i thought that's what i demoed so good but now i showed you both options so um let's go ahead and pull the rest of this out and we'll just show you how that works effectively down here um i think i'll pull this plate out first uh put the whole assembly out cool so one last screw uh spring so oh, that fell down that's gone too cool everything's gone and broken um you got this little assembly here this plate i can pull off it's the little fingers i can even show you of course them like those are the fingers there's how they there you go yeah see how they fit in that divot so this normally rotates do to do do to do and then eventually clank goes right into that divot wow those are huge shitty divots too poor manufacturing because it's cheap this plate see it's got the two little springs on the bottom that's what tries to constantly push it up and eventually pushes it into the divots the fact that all of these fingers uh, you know what's funny this actually has four fingers and only three are used i wonder if the four dial version is all the same hardware and just one more dial <laughs> that'd be hilarious like what a stupid oh it's more secure yeah great no <laughs> uh, yeah but normally that's sitting as you saw just inside here like that and those springs just want to constantly push it up but it can't if the camera is in the way so this the way that password reset works See those little teeth in there? The gear teeth? There's a few little teeth on this one. See, there's like four. One, two, three, four. You guys see them just right on the big ring on the top? Those uh, lock in for those teeth there. And that's what locks the password in. And so pushing that lever in, which is normally in a spring, pulls those out of there. You can turn the wheel and then lock it back into place and that's your new password. That's how that works. Because uh, in the end, all that matters is that these things can rotate so that that divot is facing down. So right now you say, oh, that divot is, you know, um, so it's locked in here. All you're doing is changing the number assigned to that divot. So like right now the divot is a four, you know, so it's gotta be set to four when you pop it out and you rotate it, the divot goes back in and now it's assigned to two. That's all that is. Uh, so that's that's it. Um, that is how unbelievably shitty not just this wag lock is, but most locks that are wheel locks like this. Um, it it it's one of my biggest biggest pet peeves um, that people what is effectively for nearly everybody the entirety of their home security uh, you know even people who have like home security systems like most often they're disabled <laughs> um, people trust the entirety of their home security you know their keys to this are the push button ones better um, sometimes sometimes not um, Man, yeah, just look on YouTube for like push button key box bypass, and there's a bunch for all models. Uh, a lot of the better manufacturers have fixed it so those methods don't work anymore, uh, and they're really hard to get into. In the end, though, um, when we're talking about key boxes, the bottom line is you have put. God, who's my house? Where's my keys? They're not actually my house keys. These are just junk. I actually don't know what they go to. Um, you're putting your keys in a box with a hook, and you're hanging it outside. So, sec security of this system, you know, or not, this is not secure. Um, unless you have some kind of, like, insane steel that isn't easy to take a grinder or a, uh, a bolt cutter to. Grinder, kind of loud. Uh, there are certainly locks where you'd have to go at them with a grinder for a while to get into them. So that's definitely more secure. Um, you have to consider the security of what you're putting this on. You know, is it on a fence? Is it on a pipe? Um, I certainly hope that you wouldn't uh, put this on your doorknob, which I see a lot of people do, like putting it like, here's the key for this doorknob. Like, why the fuck would you do that? Put it somewhere else, put it across the street. Let them think it's, you know, for your neighbor's house. 
Like that's a great thing you can do with these. If you have to use one of these for some reason, don't hang it on your house. But yeah, the push button one's not necessarily better. Um, and there's there are great wheel uh, wheel off ones too that operate by um, they'll put a shield. Oh, let me get this here. They'll put a little shield around the outside so that put my cam tool away. Uh, so that you just you can't touch the cam wheel with your feeler gauge, with your decoder tool. Like all you touch is this metal shield that's around the outside or most of the outside and it's only open at the bottom where the divot goes. Uh, and so you just can't ever find that divot coming in from the front. There's plenty that are made like that and they're really good. Um, I've never seen one on a key box. Like why wouldn't you put it on the most important thing? But yes. Um, yeah, so it's not to say all key boxes with, you know, with these encoder wheels like this are bad. Uh, it's just that I've never seen one that's good. Uh, so yeah, so um, that's WAG's second piece of crap uh, key box that um, allows strangers to very, very easily access your home without you ever knowing that they've made copies of your keys. Um, but I guess in the end, if you're using a service like WAG, you don't care about strangers coming into your house whenever they want anyway. So there's that. Um, it's a school night. I'm going to wrap it up. This was a good quick stream. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Uh, let's see. Are you talking about mechanical push button ones? A lot of those don't care what order you push the buttons in. That's true. Um, yeah, the push button ones, even the good ones that you can't find the numbers, um, you at least don't, you at least can figure out what, which numbers probably uh, were used, which you can often determine if they're used a lot by just looking at wear and tear on the buttons or even greasy thumbprints or something. Um, or um, a friend of mine has one of those thermal sensors on his phone and he was using those to get people's pin numbers for debit cards because after you push something, you leave heat behind for a while. And so as long as you know which four numbers are involved on uh, those push button ones, it doesn't matter what order you push them in. Nick is right, they'll just pop open. So yeah, there's that. Enjoy that. Um, but yeah, this is uh, just a quick stream. Uh, I didn't know when to do it, and I'm like, oh, we're going to wreck it, so it's good for Wreck It Wednesdays. So thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Um, please help out with Doggo Bills if you think that I'm providing a fun, entertaining service here. That would be great. Um, you want to pick up some of those COVID ornaments? If you are, have a sick mind like I do, those are still available. And uh, thanks a lot. We'll see you kids probably Friday, I think. Or something. We'll find something maybe. Bye. Everybody wave. I'm going to wave now. Bye.